This is Pastor Robert Tilden coming to you again on today, coming to you live right here in the sanctuary of Oak Grove Baptist Church. And I've got some new folks and some new faces with me. New to y'all. It's not new to us. New to y'all is not new to us. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to be here in the house of God here one more time. Um, our declaration is still the same that God has kept us yet another week. So from last Wednesday to this Wednesday, we are back here again to have some conversation and some dialogue on unusual places. And so I'm blessed to be able to serve um, in ministry with such a great group of people, such a great group of ecclesiastical preachers, ecclesiastical servants who have come to serve the fold of God, the household of God, and serve the tables of God. So I am here on today with a different group of ministers here at the Oak Grove Baptist Church that I promise you that you're going to be blessed with. Amen. They come from different walks, different walks, and different backgrounds, and I'm glad to be able to say I serve along with these individuals. Here to my right, we have Minister Brittany Moss, amen, that is with us. Minister Brittany, uh, Minister Moss served us, I actually call it Elder Elect, we're going to call it Elder Elect tonight, amen, amen. She is going to, uh, she, Minister Moss is up, up um, undergirding and spearheading, overseeing our youth ministry. She's got several other responsibilities here at the Oak Grove Baptist Church, but she is definitely uh, serving us and our serving our youth. We're so thankful for her, grateful to her. Um, for all of her abilities and gifts and talents that she brings to the table. Our youth pastor B is what some of the kids are going to be calling her, Pastor B. And so we're excited about that. But she's coming to us with a great, great background um, to be able to share and discuss some things that are happening with us. And to my left, we have uh, one of the generals of the Gospels, when I call him, one of, my right hand man, uh, the one and the only, you know, the Hector McCollum, amen, who is pretty much a life member here at the Oak Grove Baptist Church. I'm so privileged, I'm so honored. To be, able to be able to stand on his shoulders, stand on his shoulders, and be able to lead the Oak Grove Baptist Church. And so it's just a blessing and a privilege to have two different generations here that's going to be able to, we're going to be able to talk freely and have some conversation about these unusual places that we are finding ourselves in here on tonight. So as we uh, navigate through, uh, I like to call these uncharted territories, these troubled waters, as many people have described, as we navigate through these waters, and, uh, we are finding ourselves in what we identify to be an unusual place, an unusual spot, an unusual territory that many of us have never been in before. I know when I'm making some phone calls to some of my seasoned saints, I'm, I'm talking to them, and some of them have even said, Pastor, we have lived through a lot of things. We have lived through some situations. We've lived through uh, components and parts of slavery. We have never seen days like we are seeing on today. So it's certainly an unusual feeling. It leaves us with unusual thoughts, and uh, we're just here to have some good dialogue about it, have some good, healthy dialogue about it, to be able to hear and see what the different generations, the different perspectives are here at the Oak Grove Baptist Church. So I just kind of am blessed to be able to share these ministry gifts with you in such a capacity. That this is still ministry, amen? I guess I just said that ministry, ministry, ministry. This is still ministry because sometimes we have to be able to come together and talk out some things and be able to talk out some things for the people out in the congregation to be able to hear our perspectives on them and how we're handling these things. A lot of people don't even realize it, but sometimes the congregation uh, are more amped up to handle things better when they see us as uh, God's chosen service to carry the gospel, how we handle things. And I think it's good to be able to be able to talk to the people and help them understand that. Uh, these times that we are living in, although it leaves us with some unusual feelings and some unusual thoughts and some unusual emotions and uh, so all of that good stuff, because everything around us has changed. Amen. Amen. Everything. I don't care what it is, how you look at it, everything around us has changed. The way we do funerals, the way we do church, the way we do education, uh, everything. The way we do family, everything has changed. And so it's left us in this unusual place, kind of wondering, uh, not only a few weeks ago, we're wondering, how are we going to get through this? Now, several weeks later, now that we feel like, okay, we're coming through it, what is it going to look like whenever all this is over? Uh, when will it be over? Will it be over? And what will normal look like after this? So we're just kind of here to share some things, to talk about some things with that. So I'm just here to be able to facilitate and ask some questions, and we're just going to all talk together on tonight. Amen? Uh, and one of the first things I, I led with last week, and I think it's only fair that I leave it on this week, because I like to hear, um, I like to hear from the heart of God's servants. Um, how, how this pandemic is impacting you as an individual, personally, um, whether it's spiritual, emotional, physical, however it is, I just kind of want to throw it out there. How, how is the pandemic impacting you? Well, uh, for me, um, it's just, it's been interesting. Uh, I'm a teacher by trade, so not being able to go to my classroom and teach my students, 
um, have that, what I call my family, I call my kids my family. Yes, so right. not That's having true. that bond and only being able to communicate with them via um, Zoom calls or, no touch. Um, yeah, yeah. that no touch. And I teach kindergarten, so it's all about touch. It's yeah. all about um, connecting with each other. Um, so it's just, it's definitely been difficult not being able to do those things and the bonds you have with the people you work with on a regular day basis. Yeah. So it's definitely been interesting. Wow, wow. So you, you teach kindergarten, so a very, very um, detrimental, pivotal, maybe it's a better one to say, a very pivotal point in these young people. Like, how long have you taught kindergarten, you know, yes. Pastor what, five years? Five years. So in five years of teaching, have you ever experienced anything like this? Have you ever had to do virtual teaching um, um, not maybe with a student or two, but with a whole classroom like this? Yeah, I never had to do virtual teaching. I've had a lot of experiences in the classroom. I've been through um, tornado we had at my old school. Oh, yeah. So I've, I've experienced many different aspects and roles of teaching, and teaching basically in unusual places and through unusual different circumstances. So I've experienced a lot of different things, but this by far will probably be the hardest because there is no- Harder than the tornado? Yeah, okay. but there's no certainty of what's next. Whereas with the tornado, it destroyed the school, but we still had other places we could go to come back together for that family atmosphere to finish our year. This time we don't get that same bond, that same opportunity. So you got you kind of got dual ministry there going because I I know what's in my mind I'm thinking that's got to be some level of ministry um, knowing the capacity you come from and your background um, you've got a master's in divinity from Wake Forest University and you're teaching young people so that's got to be a level of ministry to them I know I know that you're a spiritual being I know you're praying for them young people I know that you are um, um, covering them with the blood and all those wonderful things but. You said, you talked about living through the tornado, which was about two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, that swept through Greensboro about two years ago. Yeah. It was about two years, okay. And so whenever you, that and this is more difficult even than that, but whenever the tornado came, you were displaced for a while, the, the, you didn't have the, did you have the same class? Whenever you were somewhere else? Yeah, um, we were separated for a time, being, but literally, the tornado hit that day, the next day we were out in the community able to go and touch those, okay. those kids. Okay. With this, you don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the opportunity to go and touch, you know, and be in relation with your students. So they don't get those hugs that they look forward to. They don't get that high five that you might have given them or that, you know, you, you're gonna do good in class today. Um, your old students, things of that nature, students that need that encouragement before they get to their class. So you, you're losing out on all those different aspects. And wow. kids live in different situations. So they look forward to That's that true. school life. That's true. I've I heard people talk about that. I know that was a major concern. At least here in Gilbert County, that was a major, well, and other school districts also on the news. That was a major concern that they were talking about kids not being, they want to make sure kids are able to eat because when they yeah. get to school, a lot of times we don't realize how blessed we are. Our children don't realize how blessed we are. I was talking about them, you know, not my baby. You don't realize just how blessed you really are, you know, um, that some kids, they're worried that some kids would be able, if they would be able to eat, and you know, the homes that they're in, if they're safe, they're safe because it, I guess it's very much true. That you see it firsthand on the front line that, that, that they may not classify you as an essential worker, but you are definitely an yeah, essential worker. Essential. You're very yeah. much essential, you yeah. know, because uh, school is not the, most, the safest place for some of them. Some, yeah. yeah. And so you had to be able to sh totally shift the dynamic. Uh, yeah, you play the role of mother, you play the role of auntie, grandma, whatever you might be to that child, um, wow. friend. Wow. So you play those different roles and those different okay. responsibilities. Wow. That's good. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. I, I, got some, I got some more questions about that because cool. that's such a raw. Kubi, 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 awesome sauce, awesome sauce. <laughs> uh, the other hand, the other hand, um, as you're affectionately known here at the Old World Baptist Church, um, Miss Monk, it was a completely, completely different perspective that I didn't even think about, but how much did it impact you? Uh, it has been a great impact on me uh, because I'm not a stay-at-home guy. I'm used to getting out and I retired, but always, ever I've been retired for 15 years, and I've been out there for 15 years, part-time. Okay, so because you 
you actually, oh, you retired. No, 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 you just celebrated a birthday. So, what? Celebrated what? 69 years. 69 years. Bless the Lord. We are so blessed with the Old Baptist Church. I see the same thing as good as some of my young adults. You know, I tell the Lord all the time, Lord, please let me grow. Please let me live not to have no wrinkles like they do. Their skin is still stretched tight and all that good stuff. So 79 years old, you're still, although you've been retired for 10 years, you're still been working. You're, you're an on the go. You're on the go. And so it's impacted you. So you work part time and so you're a caregiver. And so it's impacted you. Say more to that. Say. And so, you know, I used, uh, used to see my fellow brother workers out there. And having the fun, and it was, I just enjoyed my job out there, amen. So, uh, even at home, amen. Uh, me and Diane, we have a daily devotion every day, and it got so now we <laughs> we to start off with a few scripture. I said, Now nah, we can be here all day. Ago. She did, and I said, That's really enough. That's really enough. So, uh, mother said, Let's read on. We yeah. have the time here. Let's read. Yeah, she, she likes to, to get it when she starts, she likes to get into it. And I do a lot myself. And uh, I don't know when she do a lot, so she likes to do a lot with me. Okay. So we do it together every day. It's been a blessing. It's been truly a blessing to us. And we have several uh, uh, family that's here. And we uh, been mostly together more. And hit bottom together. And I think there's a reason for that we need it to be able to be more, spend more time. I started a thing years ago, every once a month, a family dinner, and it faded away, but this year, for some reason, one of my daughters wanted to start it back. Okay, okay. So every fourth Sunday, we have a family dinner. That's right. So we have been coming together, and it started, I seen the bond of us getting more togetherness. Because of that, because fellowship, you know, we, uh, uh, a lot of times uh, we don't have that fellowship, we draw from apart from one another. So that's a, a, a lot that we need that fellowship with family, church, friends, and everybody. So that means a lot. I believe uh, God designed most for us to do, to have a relationship and a fellowship. Amen. So he's like Relationship that. and fellowship. That's good. Yeah. So, that's balance. I like that. I go you take a note, take that note. You need relationship and fellowship. Amen. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one thing that happened when a niece, son, the virus, wow. 51 years old, passed in New Jersey. Jesus. And what's so heartbroken about that? No, let us speak. Go to the family. Mm. I mean, it's film. No film. And that was sort of heartbreaking to me, but uh, you said none of you all could go to the. Did, were they even able to have a funeral? Were they even, okay, wow. See, because I know it's a, it's different components, different demographics. For a while, the funeral was doing different things. So in some cases, they were having grace side services. In some cases, depending on how early, how long ago it was, how early the game it was, it was kind of like they couldn't do anything at all. I know we had a member, um, a member here who lost her brother, and. They weren't even able to have a service. And that was at the very, very beginning, like the first week. Right. The first week of, I don't even think we had been sent home to work from home yet, but it was like the first week when it was just kind of blowing up. And so, y'all weren't even able to go to the funeral. Like, weren't even able to have a service. No, even his mom didn't go. She brought it back to Rosen, I'm a hometown, but she didn't go to the graveside. I don't understand that. The mother couldn't go to the graveside. Then they were really straight. And then a month ago, but I, I tell you, there are always some good come out. Uh, my kids were led to have a memorial service here in High Point that's, that Sunday for him. And uh, the Lord blessed him tremendously. On my Facebook, God. God. the last time we had over a thousand people was the John Me and All. The Word of God went forth. The North and the Praise Brothers of God were there. The invitation for salvation was given. Yeah. So there's some good coming out of it anyway. So we were blessed and we got many calls. Our people were blessed on the service. Okay. And so God bless anyway. There always means a way of something good coming out of it. Right. Seems like a bad situation, but God got something good. But it's like this right here. That's good. There's something good can come out of it. That's good. Something good can come out of it. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely something good can come out of it. That, that says a lot. So you, you've been greatly impacted from your 
um, from your social life, not being able to get out of the house as much, to um, home life, to family members and loss of family members and having to do things to feel a different way. That, that speaks volumes and says a lot. Um, and I'm actually going to come back to you. I want to talk to you a little bit in a few minutes about you and uh, Mother McCullough, uh, your wife, who's one of the great saints and mothers of our church. I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. But you said something kind of key in regards to your family coming together. Um, Pastor B said, hey, that's kind of but balance we have fellowship and relationship but it kind of actually kind of swings me back to you um moms because his family is here and you're a west coast chick yeah all the way all the way from cali all the way from los angeles california we got a cali girl in the house in california folks watching they'll know they'll know we got a cali girl in the house but uh pastor b um in looking at that and kind of understanding that how does that make you feel because on the young man is West Coast, right? Does that make sense? So how, how is that? Because he, uh, the head said, you know, from, on one perspective, you know, his family is here, his daughters, his children, several grandchildren are here, but your family is West Coast. How is that? And they're actually heavily impacted there, working in higher education. I know some of the colleges in California have already said, we will not be returning in person. So it's still pretty heavy out there. They're taking a major security measure, a safety measure. So how, how is that impacting you having mom and Brother, talk, talk, talk um, it's definitely it's different um, for me being that I've been away for so long um, I've been in North Carolina at least 13 years or you longer so your mom, she belongs to us now your mom belongs to us so it's definitely um, it's always been a challenge for me because there's times when um, when I was in school or something like that, if something happened to the family, you can't always just hop on a plane and go. Okay. And even now, it's even more to that standpoint. Okay. Um, we've had family members who've passed recently, but not from the virus, but still not being able to have services right. for them. We have to so, in there, yeah. yeah, there's been where, um, you know, only three or four people are allowed to go to the great side and have a service for your loved one. So it definitely has impacted my family. And um, a lot of this time, um, we did, um, I have a cousin who just graduated college. We went and did a FaceTime, Zoom, um, family thing. So it was just, and Mother's Day, we had a Zoom. So it was still, it was good to be able to see everybody. And okay. still have that, you know, yes. relationship and that togetherness, mm -hmm. even though I couldn't physically be with them. Okay. And they can't physically be with each other. Right. Wow. So wow. it is that in power. Yeah, I think it's pretty heavy out there. So, and with it being as, as uh, detrimental as it is in California, how would that impact your church? Because typically you go home once a year. Uh, that's ideal. That's ideal to go home. <laughs> to go home. Yes, because she's like, that's not gonna be here for two or three weeks. I'm thinking, where you going? <laughs> she's like, I'm going home. You want to see mom now? So I think mom came here last that's year. Yeah. yeah, mom came. You know, mom, it's safer here in North Carolina. If you watch it, you can yeah. come here. You know, you can always come here. Look, grandma is on Okay, grandma is on so Okay, mom, you just can't say. Okay, understandable, understandable. <laughs> uh, but so, how will that impact your plans for the summer? Um, we already had. We had a you know, they canceled it. So um, I did have intentions on going home um, and seeing my family because I actually haven't been to LA to see my family probably in at least two or three years. Okay. So I had intentions on actually traveling to go home and wow. then here comes this virus and travel so has, you know, it's had, great, it's had a great impact. It's got had a great impact on everything. So education, family, um, we've been talking about our funerals and grieving. So it's, a, it's amazing um, how we even have to grieve differently now. I know we, we touched on this a tad bit last week, but um, in regards to me speaking, in regards to some, but you both have experienced that death, and you have to grieve differently now. And you know, it's one thing to grieve, but then when you have to grieve, the, the strength, the process of, uh, I guess, memorializing a loved one has been streamlined now. And you know, you, depending on the funeral home, or depending on where, where we are in phases, you can go to the graveyard, or you can't go to the graveyard, or if you go to the graveyard, you can touch, but you can't touch, or if, you know, and I've seen some services where they have been in church, very few people, very minimal people, but they still can't touch the body for whatever reason. So, you know, it's, it's a lot to be considered um, from this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It's a definitely a lot to be considered, and it's 
It's challenging us and it's stretching us to be able to do things different ways so that we can still stay in contact with our family and so that we can still have relationship and fellowship and so it's even stretching us here to the church so that we can still be able to get the word out. So it's, it's, it's causing us to have to do some things differently. Uh, uh, you said something earlier though. You said something earlier about you and Mother McCullough, how y'all oftentimes read uh, together and have a daily devotion and meditation together and Mother sometimes just wants to keep going which is a wonderful thing. Um, it's brought the family together. Um, which is a wonderful thing also. How, how do you see this? How do you see this impacting life? Uh, and I, think, I guess we ask this from a, from a marital standpoint as well as from a dating standpoint. You know, how, is, how has this COVID pandemic, how has it impacted, you know, relationships? Or how do you think it's going to, what the long-term effect on relationships that it's going to have? Because, you know, we're, we're locked up in the house together all day, every day, you know, going out minimal. You know, you're over 60, so you probably go out even less than we do. And so how, how do you think it's impacting some relationships? Uh, most of the older people I talk with states that they don't go out till it's necessary. necessary right. so if their kids are out, they'll call, do you need such and such a thing, we'll bring it by. And so uh, we need that. And I believe uh, it can call many of us as family people. Right. And, and as the body of Christ, and as people in the community just want to help people and they're able. Mm -hmm. If they're not able to go or they're not able to get what they need, you bring it back. Uh, my mother-in-law said that you brought something back for her, you know, Pastor. And, and so we, as, as children of God, I believe God is going to help us think different. So when we start thinking different, we begin to do different. Right. When we start thinking different, we're going to expect some things different. So our lifestyle should shift in another position. Right? For the greater, for the better, and more for the kingdom of God. It's about acting up. Yes, yes. We have to get that mentality. And I, I believe uh, uh, even that family knows, you know, it causes us, the more we fellowship one another, to have our hearts towards one another. Mm -hmm. That's surrounded, and it's something that's like church. That's the people who say what they want about. And it's, and it's great and it's good, but it's nothing like that fellowship yeah. in that church. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people who are like, I miss church. <laughs> no, I know there was a lean going around, a little chip going around, I'm tired of this church. You know? uh, I feel the adverse way now. I miss church. I do, but when we come back, I want to be safe, but I miss it. I miss church. I miss church people. I miss the services. All those good things. And so you're right. I think you're absolutely right. You know, this pandemic has shown us and proven to us that, you know, we need to be in relationship with each other with each other. Each other. I know we have several of us have called around and set face to check on each other. It's kind of like, well, if you buy some toilet paper, grab me some I'll catch that. <laughs> if you buy some paper towels or some lights all rights, you know, I don't know, he was a hip hop here, like, yo, I'm here, you, you need to, yeah, grab me a can of that. It's a spray of this. Uh, one of my one of the church members said they need that, right? You know, and so it's I, I think it's good whether we are in the same church, a different church, a different denomination. Right. We're all part of the kingdom of God. We're right. taking care of each other, such as family members are doing. Um, uh, but as it pertains to relationships, as far as marriages and relationships and being in the house, well, I, even if not married, my daughter and I, we're in the house together. And actually, I think we're doing pretty good. We got, uh, other than the fact I told somebody last week, long week, I find that we're quite so plump by the time we get at church. Uh, but uh, other than that, just kind of being closed up in the house together, do you think that's having an impact on relationships? Yeah, I think that means a lot, and that can cause us to want to do more. For each other, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 when Diane was in the hospital, I would go up every day and read the Word of God to her. And when she come home, I would still read for two or three weeks. And then I start pushing her along. <laughs> you, got, you got it now, you got one. <laughs> fly, fly, brother, fly. But, but this song brought us back in full circle again, okay. doing it together again. So that's, I think it's a, a, a mindset for us to be able to be able to pursue after that. Okay. So what, 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 what we learn from, you know, if it's working and it's good for us, why don't we keep on doing it? Okay. But that's the thing that we have to get in our mind, that's what we're going to do. Not because we didn't take time. That's the sacrifice. We have to take the time. Take we, the say, time. we say we don't have time, but we have to take time. 
We do it. Yeah. Because we're there and we're, we're doing it, but as the time comes, that we're going to have to persevere through that. Don't have time, take time. Yeah. And that, that's what couples are learning to do. Now, this pandemic is forcing us to take the time to get to know each other and do figure out what's working from it. We, we can't keep running from it. Can't keep, you can't run to the office and you can't run out and go out and hang out with your friends. And, the, the, the most you want to do is run to the next room <laughs> with each other, you know. Uh, and how long have you and Mother McCullough been married? Uh, 54 years. Yeah, that's a story. 54 years. Five to the four. That's what I'm talking about. 54 years. Wonderful, wonderful. 54 years that you still love each other and figure things out and still learn each other and you still bring things full circle. Uh, Ms. Cross, what do you think about the whole dating perspective? How do you see, uh, how, how have you thought maybe some, some of our friends that are dating, you know, or trying to date? I've had some friends from homeboys kind of like, you know, it's kind of we can't go out, we can't go nowhere. Okay, you're not talking on the test. <laughs> you know, at the most part. Do you think this pandemic is affecting or impacting um, relationships? It definitely they, probably will affect how people in the future do date or whatever yeah. they want to do. Yeah. Um, it's definitely going to impact it. It impacts your own regular friendships that you have with people um, and not being able to have those relationships. Right. So, wow. um, Good point. It, it, it affects on all, all yeah. levels because there is a lack of ability to go and be with other people. So that lack of ability to physically be present in someone else's presence, um, it affects people. And people who live alone, imagine, I mean, you're, you're at home. Yeah. All day, 24 hours. <laughs> Working from home. Working from home. You know, watch the TV at home by yourself. You, yeah. you know, you might go out and order something, but come back home and eat, eat it. Come back home and eat it alone. So yeah. it definitely plays a major part in in that 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 whole missing the ability right. to communicate right. and be with other people. Right. I, I swear that married people. You have that opportunity. Right. You have someone, yeah. you know, to go to. That's true. And you can go get on their nerves if you want to. <laughs> you know, you have somebody. Right. Whereas those who are single, you just don't have that opportunity. You just, you just there. You just there. Yeah. Like, and if you don't have no kids, then you know. That's what you need friends. You need, I need somebody to talk to. Right. I, I need to get on somebody's nerves. Right. That's when Zoom and text messaging that becomes a major part of your reality. Wow. Right. I saw something on, um, I actually was a clip online that was talking about virtual dating. Um, very creative, I'm not sure if I can do it, but you know, I, the, the, the couple, um, he called her, they had um, FaceTime, um, they sat there, they had conversation, they ordered takeout food to be delivered to both of them, they ate together, you know, on Zoom, they set up the camera, put on some music, and they kind of danced in their own spaces, and I thought, mm, I mean, it, I mean, it has the possibility, actually, to be an asset as well. Because people don't communicate as, as frequent as they should in healthy ways. So that gives you that opportunity to have those conversations with people to get to know them. Okay. okay. So, so it has the opportunity. It's, it's a little bit safer, too. Okay. Well, you got a good point. <laughs> you know, I ain't got to worry about you being crazy. Right. <laughs> I ain't got to worry about crazy you press in. Yeah. In. <laughs> This call, this day, this Zoom, this face time is over. Yeah, you know. Okay, that makes sense. So this, this call pandemic is kind of forcing us to, to kind of, it's uh, forcing our communication skills to kind of to have some healthy communication, healthy dialogue. So you really need to know people. Um, introvert and, people have a. You, know, a hard you think you're an introvert? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 said yes. Uh, you think you're an introvert? Or you, or you, well, you know, you said you like to go out. You like to be out. Okay, so. Well, I love to be home, but this is too much home. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, even when I go out, I had like, who will go who around? Because uh, she had that sickness, and so mm -hmm. she had a real caution of that. Right. Said, Don't be around a lot of people. Right. That, that's so right. When I go out. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do that even when I'm mad. Okay. And we're mad, gloves, and everything else. But, you know, and I understand, you know, she don't, because she goes to die out, but mm -hmm. they are really, really They're very strict. Mm -hmm. They're very strict. Yeah. Yeah. And so I yeah. guess that's where she got that's where she got that from. Every time I'm like, what do you mean? Who are you around? Mother said, I know. Right. 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 Right.
Right. <laughs> and so, you know, and he's trying to check, see who, you know, everything not right, but she just want to know who was out loud can keep it and track anything from that. And I, I appreciate all that. And that keeps me reminded that I, you know, I, I uh, think about going about somebody, but you got people that don't want to be around. You know, you know my neighbor said, she ain't coming to do it now, but she ain't coming in. Right. <laughs> So a lot of people are real, because, and nothing wrong with that, and nothing wrong with that. But I, uh, we have to be able to just uh, be able to accept that right. for now, you know, right. and believe things will get better. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. um, have, I guess have, having said that, you know, we kind of identify certain ways and things that that are happening, and like Mother McCullough said, she want to know who you been around. Look, look, and did you like uh, kind of double boss said, have you kept your distance? You know, when you were out there. So we, so we have to uh, now begin to think differently. We have to now begin, where before you would go out, even though Mother McCullough had dialysis and things of that nature, um, uh, you go out, you come back, no big deal. But now we're having to think differently, which is pushing us and pressing us even in the church. We have to learn to think differently in the church now. And so it kind of leads me to, to, to bring this kind of full circle, even in regards to church, because you know, just recently this week, um, or just last week, last weekend, uh, federal judge kind of ruled against Governor Cooper's um, idea of not opening churches yet, but you know some churches are opening, which is if that's what they agree to do, I'm perfectly okay with that. I totally respect if your pastor says the church doors are open and he's putting regulations in place. Um, oh, well, we haven't opened back up yet, and uh, actually, to be honest, we don't have a date when we're going to open back up yet because uh, we've gotten some information um, of some regulations and some rules and some guidelines that we're going to have to implement. Um, uh, whenever we do come into church. So how do you foresee or perceive, and I guess I'm going to ask you, Mons, from a, uh, a youth perspective, how do you perceive church being whenever we do come back to church, whenever we do open the church, or that, uh, do you foresee us even having children's church in the beginning? Uh, I don't feel like young people, I don't feel like young people, but you can help me here, because young people may have more sense than we got. I don't even feel like young people have the awareness to understand social distancing in that fact. But, uh, um. I think young people do have mm -hmm. awareness. Okay. Um, my godson is six, and he definitely and has the super, has the awareness. awareness. <laughs> he definitely has the awareness um, of keeping your distance. And you know, um, when he does come, because his mom works, he comes to stay with me. Um, he'll go out riding his bike, and if another kid comes by, he's like, "You gotta stand over there." Oh, so good. you know, y'all talking real good. <laughs> so stay out my face. Yeah. So you still that side of the street. I'll be on this side, you can talk, but you can't, you know, be in my personal space. Okay. So children definitely have the knowledge. Okay. Um, okay. but is it still a challenge? I believe so. Okay. It's definitely gonna still be a challenge. I know our youth really enjoy having children's church. They listen. They would have it every week. They would. I would allow it. They would. <laughs> they, they come at past now. We have don't ask me. Tip. It's definitely something that I mean even Bryson, he, he said before, while we went on out of out of church, uh, we tuned in and watched the live of the church and he said, Well, aren't you gonna do children's church? And I'm like, Well, you know, I can tune you into somebody who's had children's church. They wanna see you. And I'm like, they you know, see you. I know. But you know, are you still in the answer to the text message? Work on. Work on. <laughs> so we're working work on. on some things. Shots <laughs> fired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, so there's the older kids might understand it better. Okay. We have a very young group, and we have our older, older group. Teenage. Okay. And we don't have a lot of in between. So just helping those younger kids, I think, understand even more. While Bryce understands, every child that's six. Yeah. Does not understand right. because the other little boy across the street doesn't understand mm -hmm. that he can't come and be right next to him. Mm -hmm. Like they, just, like, you know, like they're used to plants. So that's the same thing with school, and that's why we have the issue that we have. Again, I teach kindergarten. Kids are hands on. They like to touch, touch, feel. They want to hug. They want to touch each other. They want right. to hug each other. So they want to be in the space. They want to touch each other. You know, crowns and pencils. And things like that you can't share. So, like for us, even having children's church, we have to have our own individual things. They wouldn't be able to share. share. 
Right, right. Um, so that's the part of the things that we're going to have to implement coming back. Some of the um, things that, that some of the pastors were reading through. Um, my bishop, Bishop Gary Kelly of the New Faithful Gospel Fellowship Center, had a conference call the other night and you know kind of laid out some things. We kind of went through it with the fine tooth comb, um, just kind of some general things. How, like you said, they're going to have to have their individual packets. We're not going to be able to. Uh, it's, it's best suggested not to be able to pass out so many things. So you know the whole thing, the way we do communion. We might have to ship that, you know, versus them walking around getting it, you know, we might have to give it out of the door. Um, and so a lot of hands off. Yeah, hands off. A lot of hands off. You know, we, we might didn't have a lot of transactions. You know, as little exchange as possible, you know, uh, for those. Giving will still need to be online. As much as possible. We're pushing. So we don't have to touch money, right. you know, things of that nature. And those who would like to give in the offer will be perfectly fine. You, but you'll pick up your envelope at the front door when you come in. Yep, and you'll drop it in the box on your way out the door as versus coming around, you know, yeah. and things like that because the, the whole point that we want is we want to minimize some of our ability to fellowship. We have to be creative with our fellowship now whenever we come back to church. And so this whole standing around inside the same now. If you stand out on my talk, that's one thing. Right. You know, there's much more distance that you can stand between, you know, but um, we kind of have to drop it off and off and things like that that we're going to be talking about putting in place. And so that's, that's a good way to think of it. the same thing even at my, um, my school during Teacher Appreciation Week, um, they had a, uh, what do you call it, a food truck came. Well, we all had our masks on, and we parked our cars. Um, I parked all the way down the hill. <laughs> far, far, far away. Far away. <laughs> Myself and my assistant and a few of the other assistants, we parked far away, and we just sat at our cars, and we were able to have that communication that we had been missing you know, from not being able to see each other. So it was a, a good opportunity, but we still had to be cautious and to separate and, you know, keep that distance. Whereas with school, right before we had the, um, right before they canceled or closed schools, that same week, we had all went out to eat. Wow. And then the next, like, you know, four or five days later, we, we can't be next to each other. So, it was definitely, you know, some some adjustment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. And speaking of masks, like you said, y'all wearing masks and all this stuff. We have y'all with uh, teacher appreciation week. That's one of the things we have to incorporate whenever we come back. Everybody's gonna have a mask on. Yeah. And so you know the way we do choir, the, yeah. you know, we, we, we probably won't be able to do choir. You know, with the choir yeah, singing. The whole church. Is you know, we, we, <laughs> we might do a praise sing because they can be more spread out with five or six people. Mm -hmm. But you know, our, our spiritual choir. Won't be able to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not enough space for them to be a far apart. Yeah. If they're over majority, not all of them, but majority of them are over 60. You know, and so things that we have to consider. What do you think worship is going to look like with masks on? How do you think our youth are going to perceive that with masks on? You know, uh -huh. it's going to be different. It'll be different. It's going to be different. You know? some, I mean, you have some people who, young and old, who can't wear a mask. Mm. So those people might not get the opportunity to even come back and fellowship wow. you know, in the church. Oh, I didn't think about that. For those who have oxygen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And wow. those with physical or um, different disabilities. Some of those three people might not be able to wear masks. Okay. You know, come from the education background, you have people who have all different types of difficulties that are a challenge when it comes to the new society that we now live in. I have a friend who suffers, well, not a friend, I have a friend whose mother suffers from anxiety, yeah. of claustrophobia. Oh, okay. And yeah. so she can't go out because it's kind of like, I can't wear a mask because she puts the mask on, but she feels like she's suffocating. Right. And so it's kind of like, it's not like, what is she to do? You know, I mean, they have those face shields that you kind of put on in the shield. But, uh, but it's still, it doesn't cover you, and it kind of keeps you from kind of, uh, I guess, protruding, saliva, spit, in the, but it still makes her feel closed in. So it's kind of like, okay, what is she going to do? Right. Because you have to have on a mask when you come to these some of these other places, but she can't wear it. And so, if she lives in California, it's mandated before you can California, go anywhere. Texas. You know, you can't go to the grocery store. Can't go to the gas station without a mask. So you have to think about all those people who would struggle, because I struggle putting it on myself, but I don't put it on because you know I want to make sure I'm safe. Right. But 
it does, you know, if you have it on for a long period of time, it's Listen. It's, it's, it's Let me say something. I'm a big boy. I'm, I'm not a healthy hug. I'm not kind of healthy. I'm healthy. Okay? Listen, walking in uh, Walmart and Sam with that mask on, I'm, I'm good for about five minutes. I'm like, woof, wait a minute now. <sighs> you know, I always fall I'm sweating. I'm really, I, I, feel like, I feel like I'm running. I feel like I'm working out. You know, it's kind of like, so I, I, I told you it's going to be a completely different change for all of us. And so that's kind of the youth perspective. Other hand, how do you feel like somebody see the saints are going to process this? You know, when we do come back to church, you know, masks are going to have to be had because in, in some cases, we might even have to turn you away. Because we have to make sure we see to the safety and the well-being of our members and our congregants. So it's kind of like if you're not willing to wear a mask, you're not willing to, yeah. How do you think some of our Stephen Saints are going to feel coming back into church? Something they've never seen before, having to wear a mask. Those who can't. Yeah, it's probably going to be difficult for them, but uh, tell them it's best for them. You know, and we, we have to instill in that. It, you know, uh, it's not what we want all the time. It's what's best for us for this time. Come on, say it again for people to back. Not what we want is what's best for us. And at this situation time, we have to stick on what's best to do now, you know, for the body of Christ. You know, and even it comes down to, I thought about evangelistic. Mm -hmm. We are, as the body of Christ, should be more prone to more doing evangelistic. Because this virus and sin virus is just is totally infected. It is. It is. If you is. don't know Jesus Christ, if you are in sin, you need to get that right. Wow. wow. And be so much afraid of catching the virus. Then if you do catch the virus, and if you have to go home, your soul is right. right. Your soul is right. That's, woo! That's what's just here. Need. That's what's needed. You, and you it's know. a good time for the evangelists letting people know now. Don't be so afraid of the, the virus as much as your soul is right. Come on, say that one more time. Don't be so much afraid of the virus as you are making sure your soul is right. Is and I think that even goes with how we now have to live stream services. So we are getting that opportunity to reach so many people yeah. who would have never yeah. Yeah. come inside That's the church right. or walk. So you have that opportunity to yeah. now touch them where they are. That's right. That's right. That's that's good. That's that's good because you got a good point. Mm -hmm. it, if we stop focusing so much on the actual virus versus making sure souls are right, right, that if you do contract the virus and if it, it is detrimental, because bless me, I know people that have survived. Now there are some who have not, but we also know some that have. We've actually had a member here in our congregation mm -hmm. who had who had contracted the virus, but God has blessed her. She's a she'll take she's a miracle, and you know she's a miracle, and we're, we're blessed by for it. But making sure the soul is right, and that's something she said whenever we talked. She said, "Pastor, at the end of the day, you know, I'm glad to know him, glad to know him as a healer, and know that what the healer can do for me. That even with this virus, I know what the healer can do. So it, it, it almost makes me wonder. I, I have to pose this question. So what does what will evangelism? How will it, how do you think evangelism will look now? Because obviously, well, I guess I can say obviously, do we think do we think the community looks more to the church now than it did before? Do we think that uh, after this pandemic that people are going to be drawn to the body of Christ? Do you think this will shake people up, non-believers? Well, believers and non-believers. Do you think it will shake us up enough to cause us to run to Christ and run to the church? I believe they should cause us at least to thank them. Mm -hmm. If you start thinking different, you want to do something better. Amen. And if we're not to, as a man thinking, so is he. Yes. So if you think yes. I need to do better, do something to do better. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, it's not a Sunday only. Don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word. Okay. Amen. It's not just, okay, all right. Because a lot of people come past it just for you to spoon feed them on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Leave and go home. Lord, I see you next Sunday. Mm. Don't have no fellowship with him all week long. Wow. And say, I'm a child of God. God is uh, putting us in a position that he won't be lower uh, of us, uh, not, uh, not lower at all. That, that's it. <laughs> Lord, if he, can't, if he can't have our own mind, our soul, the rest of the week, not just Sunday. You got pretty good so, Sunday going to something to do with but the 
lot of go home with nothing did for Jesus Christ all we know. And God has put in us in the remembrance of what he has called us to do. To be a witness to the world. And that's the truth. First of all, you have to be a witness that witness in you. Church has to be not more than you going to church. Church has to be in you. In you. In us. Somebody say that out of the land. It's got to be in you. In you. Yes, sir. And, and if it's in it, I declare it here tonight. I, that's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. And, and I believe, I believe that this pandemic is proving what's really in us. I, I, I strongly believe. I believe it's pushing us to get closer to God, but I also believe it's proving what's in us. Because me personally, even as pastor, yes, I'm holding the mic, but I'll be first to say I prayed more now, and I prayed a long time. And I look these last few years, I had to pray. Listen here, I had to pray through some things these last years, but I'm telling you, this has been a different. This has been something really different. It is, it's, you're right. It's pushing us. The prayer is proving uh, the relationship we have is proving what's really inside of us, really inside of us. So, so we have to be able to even look at what evangelism will look like, you know, amongst this virtual, these virtual services. Among, you know, is there, do you think that is there a greater need for us to go out into the heads and the highways and, you know, as the word has commanded us? And what does that look like now? You know, half of us scared to go, uh, I have to say scared, but half of us are cautious um, in where we go and going to other folks' house, but, you know, whenever. Things get back to whatever the new norm is. Whenever things get back to that, you know, um, how will evangelism door to door out in the streets? How will that look going forward? I think everything has has got to change. You know, there's a there's a call to shift how we thought of call to shift. Yes, how we thought of life and Christianity and um, our faith. It all has to shift. Everything that we've always done, we can't do it that way. Everything has to shift. That's good. That, that, that has come up a lot tonight. Everything. Somebody just typed in. Everything has to shift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So from the top to the bottom, um, how we do everything, we've got to think of it differently. Um, and it's it's forcing those of us that are in ministry to you know start those wheels going. How can how can it be different? And even when you're having conversations with your friends, you're like, we can't do it how we used to do. You know, church is not the same anymore. That's it. Shouting and all that. You can't. We can still do it, but we have to mind how we're doing it. How are you doing it? In what space you're doing it? In whose space are you in? Stay in your space. (laughs) Do not come dancing over here. Yeah, you know. Don't come flying over here. How you interact with the saints wow. through your service. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. High five, baby. No. There's no more high five. No, no more high five. I'm not high five. <laughs> <laughs> Air five from a distance. Right. Air five. Uh, uh, maybe, 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 Air Pastor, you just, you just spoke something about senior pastor to me. Air five your neighbor. Right. When, we get that, away. when we get that shirt, air five somebody down the other end of your road. That's right. right. If you touch them, yeah. you might get knocked yeah. out. Do not touch nobody. Okay? Yeah. So it just it changes every aspect <laughs> wow. of wow. ministry. You know, <laughs> you know, and I thought about when, when the boss said that. We got uh, an hour uh, of learning in the morning time when I wake up to be refreshed mm-hmm. is lift my hands and tell God I thank yes. you. Right. That's our therapy mm-hmm. for the day. That's my therapy for the day. I'm, 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 I'm learning that and I'm putting it in practice on a daily basis. When I wake up, I sit on the side of the bed and lift my hands and I say, Hallelujah, thank you for this day, Lord. That's my therapy for the day. Yeah. I'm being refreshed and older. And we, as Christians, we not get, may not get the full of the fact that we can have to. So practice that on our own. Get that with you. Gotta get work from him. Say it again for people tonight. You gotta get it for yourself. For yourself. For yourself. We we are in the time now. The seed is planted, but you have to then gonna have to go after the right. Right. Ah, that's it. It becomes a personal. It has to be personal. This is proving us. It's forcing us. So, so all the all the bad that people have, I can't believe we can't go here. I can't get my hair done. I can't get my feet done. I can't go out to eat. I can't do this. I can't fellowship. I can't go. But it's a, it's a lot of good stuff that's come out of it. Even in the church, it's a lot of good stuff. Because like I said, 
it has become personal for you now. You cannot depend on us. Yeah, you can't depend on the preachers and the deacons and, and the, the, the praise team, the, the, the musicians. You can't. I, I'll be honest with you, even as pastor, it has it, look, it, it has taught me something. You know, it's a personal thing. I'm the type of person. Uh, I think I think it was LeBron James that I do it with the I, I felt like you know, with no congregation here, what? You know, it 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 was then that it proved what was inside of me. Real ministry was that there's no energy in the room from the congregation, you know, which is not a bad thing, but it's just something I had to learn and become accustomed to. So you're right, it's a personal thing. You have to know what you have on the inside, and you have to perfect that and grow that. Yeah, you have to perfect that and grow that. So, uh, as you said, if, uh, everything is, has to shift from the top to the bottom. Everything has to change in the way we do things, and um, it's causing things to look different to us now. Feel different. Uh, it's caused to be in some unusual places, uh, and eventually, these unusual places will become somewhat normal to us at, at some point. You know, whenever we look at it. So, um, so now with education, family, life, we're just having to do it differently. Um, uh, uh, Elder Marsh, you said something earlier that I just kind of want to bring back up as we get ready to to try to wrap this up. I just kind of want to. You mentioned balance. You said when Elder Head was talking, you said something about balance and how this is kind of for, how, how has this pandemic uh, called, how do you think, or how do we think this pandemic has caused us to find balance in things? And I like to speak from a personal perspective, but um, what I'm a person, I like, as Elder Hicks said, I like to go. Uh, I'm very much, you're an introvert, I'm very much an extrovert. Um, I like people, I like interacting with people, I like being, I like people, you, I like people, you people too, but, but you like your home too. I've I, I discovered some things about myself. And, you know, I, my mom was calling, she was like, I know it's about to drive you to some of my friends. My home girl is Charlotte, my sister. She was like, I know it's about to drive you crazy. You can't go, what you doing? I was like, laid up on the sofa watching the TV. I feel, I feel just fine. You know, as much as an extrovert as I am, I have also slowed down a lot. And I've been okay with it. So um, I, I have found some balance. Now, this has brought families together. Um, it's causing to find out something about how do we think this pandemic, or do we think it has it brought any balance to our lives or the lives of church people? Um, I think it does, and it has brought about a balance. Um, we had to basically isolate ourselves from the world. <laughs> so you then have to deal with yourself. So when you deal with yourself, <laughs> you have no other option. Oh, yeah. Talk, talk to us about that. Deal with yourself. You have no other option but to no find that balance that you need. You see, you see where you were always going, and now you're like, what's the point? What was? Did what I have to go right. all the time? Yeah. And um, as things are opening back up, you still see that need to spend that time with your family, mm-hmm. and not necessarily. We have that's to right. go out. That's true. And for me, you know, my family are my friends. I tell you, I'm saying with I'm saying with uh other mom. My family, I said anybody know me, if if you if you a friend, I call you a friend, you put it yeah. in my family. Yeah. Yeah. Your family. So um having those balanced relationships. And with, with with even with church and ministry, when you're always going and going, you have to find that balance. You know, when you have children, you got to find that balance. Uh, how do I work? I how do I do ministry? She said, how do I, you know, have family? Right, right. She said, she said it good too. How do you have all of that? You, you, this has forced you to put things in perspective yes, to yes, see and see this is what's important. Mm-hmm. And these bonds are what are important bonds. Right. Um, and it then builds those bonds. It builds those relationships. Yeah. And it makes it put on a, a firm foundation mm-hmm. where the foundation might have been rocky. Mm-hmm. Your foundation wow. is more solid. Wow. Solid. Wow. So it has taught us to figure out what's the, what's, what's, what you say is important, what is important, and what's not important. Right. This is what this pandemic has taught us in regards to balance. Because you said something real key. Because a lot, a lot of people, a lot of churches, we church gentlemen. We just went from service to service. You know, we still do it online. Yeah, yeah, but it's not like the swipe. Right. Share. <laughs> look, look, flip over, jump, look, and we get real good. Set your phone up on one page and your computer on, your iPad on one page. And your computer on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th- this has taught us to really slow down and figure out what we say is important and you figure out what's really not important. Right. 
you know, what really is important and what's not important at all. They think that we can't hide from or dive into, you know, to be able to say, um, this is because we don't want to really deal with, as you say, deal with yourself. You don't want to, this has taught us, you have to deal with yourself. You can't just keep running from meeting to meeting, keep running to the church, choir rehearsal this day, and missionary meeting that day, and I'm going to paint you. Standing work extra time, you know. I'm going to my homeboy's house, I'm going to my homegirl's house, so I'm just I'm, I'm going over here to the frat meeting. I'm going over here to this committee meeting, and right. I, I'm going to. Yeah. Is this really necessary? Say it one more time. It, it, we have to get on that thing. Is this really necessary? Yeah. We are coming to the point that we need to consider what is necessary for now, on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And daily basis, same change. You have to readjust and adjust in a day's time. You know, I think as the body of Christ, we should be focused on now praying for those that's in leadership that they make the right decision of what to go back doing, Absolutely. what not to go back doing, Absolutely. when we go back doing, how we do it, to a certain extent. I believe if we seek God's face for them to have revelation and knowledge and wisdom and knowledge to do it, God's way, it'll work out for the good. Mm-hmm. If we, as the body of Christ and believers, seek God in prayer for our leadership now, they need instruction from the Lord. That's true. What substantial things that they, and decisions that they make that will help and benefit us here in this earth. So what happened is we allowed them to be out there on their own. God had called the church yes. to do that. That's it. Come on. He at the, He put us in charge of uh, where we're not in the position all by ourselves, but we have authority. We have power to put things in perfect perspective as God would have to be. And God is looking at His people and His church out on this earth now that represent Him to shine. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And look at up to Him that what He put in position. And no man can take down, no man can pull it and scatter. But what we sit back, we said we got a lot of do. They can't do it on their own. That's true. That's true. Leadership cannot do it on their own. So is it safe to say? Well, I I'm asking. I know, I know I've been giving some thought to this because even as a single pastor, I, you know I think it's good. Well, I know I can't think of everything at one time. So what type of things? What type of do you do you think there needs to be a team put in place? Um, let me ask you something. Do you think it's safe to say that the church wasn't ready when, for this pandemic? That we weren't ready? It kind of caught us off guard? Sure. Well, you know what? I don't even, even say the church. I think it caught everybody off guard. Yeah, it caught, say, say it one more time. Yeah, it it caught, this pandemic caught the world off guard. It didn't catch God off guard. That's the one, which is why, this is why I'm, I'm, I trust and I think, but it caught the world off guard. And so, including the church, it caught us off guard. And so, do you think um, a team, an emergency team, will be beneficial? I know that's something we've been thinking, I've been thinking about here at the Overall Baptist Church as we uh, kind of prepare to move forward. That should there be a team put in place that, that we can talk to and consult? Because pastors, we can't think of everything. Yes, we pray. We we put our ear to the big heartbeat of God. Some sometimes I don't know what all the pastors want to say. It, I'll say it. Sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we miss the mark. I mean, I think a team. Do y'all think a team will be beneficial for the church? to be able to think about future emergencies and future pandemics and things of this nature? Um, I think the reality is there's always something that's going on. Um, There's always opportunity for things to happen to the church. And we have to always stay ready. Um, When the school, when I was at my school and we had a tornado, we prepared for tornadoes. The drills. Drills, you know. We had a drill. We had those drills. Uh, the live, um, the live shooter. Yes. Well, you know, we have all the drills. Yes, we okay, have so. we have drills that are necessary. If that would have been a regular school day, I very much would have. I used to stay at school till five, six o'clock. Wow. So I could have very much been at my school. We would have been one day later. Wow. It was on a Sunday. It would have been a Monday. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, what could have more than right. more than likely would have been present at the time that the storm actually hit. So we have to always be prepared. We even had one. It, I don't think anything actually touched down, but 
Uh, right before school got out, sometime I think it was either February, we went on, kids were on the bus, and we're literally, it's raining, we were running out, grabbing kids off the buses mm -hmm. to bring them back into the school. Wow. But because we planned for it, we're ready for those situations. So yes, just like we planned for emergency situations, the emergency teams, we prepare, our security teams, we prepare right. for an emergency situation. So this is yet another thing that we be prepared for. And so I, okay, all right, sound, sound like a winner. Sound we always want to be prepared. It may never happen, but we need to be prepared. And sometimes not to a case like this that will teach you, okay, you're, there's a gap here. This, this is something, sometimes these type of troubles will, will teach you that there is a gap somewhere that you need to prepare for. Because it was the same way with emergency situations, the same way with, you know, we, we never thought about until we had the shooting in Charleston. We never thought about having a training for an active shooter. Right. It's an active shooter coming in, but so we hosted that training. So it and while that. you train, you still may never be but it's better to have some. But you have that knowledge at least in the background of your mind. You might not act on it, but you have that, that knowledge there that it can assist you when you and it can assist you in any location. You might not be at church. Mm -hmm. But having that knowledge can help you out, you know, in the world. That's absolutely, right. absolutely. This has been good. This has absolutely been wonderful. I told you, I told y'all y'all be blessed with these ministry gifts that we have sitting here. I want to say a great God bless you and I thank you. Thank you so much. Elder Heck McCullough, God bless you. Thank you so much. Elect the love. Elder Elect uh, Brick T. Moss, we greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much for all that you brought to the table. This is our conversation on this week. Meet us back here again on next week. We'll have a different group of ministers to be able to talk with you. And we're still going to be talking and sharing with the idea of unusual places. So thank you so much for tuning in with us. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Until the next time, always keep your hope close to you. God bless you.